In the story of Ragnarok, it is foreseen that the Aesir home realm of Asgard is breached by giants from all over the realms, notably the fire giants of Muselheim and the giants of Jotunheim. Prophecy states that all the giants give their lives in this final, massive, all-out assault on Asgard, which results in the death of Thor, Odin, and the destruction of Asgard. It is for this reason Odin, in his paranoid state of trying to prevent the events of Ragnarok, ordered the genocide of all of the giants and killed so many historically important giants through the course of history. We hear them mentioned in legends throughout God of War 2018. And in the 2018 game, it would seem like Odin has pretty much succeeded. There are no more giants in Midgard, almost. The Muselheim giants are nowhere to be found. And when we get to Jotunheim to spread phase ashes, all of the giants are already dead. Which is weird for two reasons. One, the giants supposedly retreated from all of the realms to be safe from the Aesir gods, and somehow they still died. And two, how can they all be dead if Ragnarok hasn't happened yet? They are supposed to fight in Ragnarok against the gods one last time, and here they are, all dead. Well, I have a very bold theory that I hope you guys will like as much as I did thinking it up. My name is Eddie, and if you enjoy this content, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more God of War content like this. Okay, let's begin. My big theory is that there are two timelines of events at play here. One in the normal Norse mythos where all the prophecies about Ragnarok are true, where Kratos isn't involved, and an entirely separate one where Kratos comes to Midgard. The reason why I think it's two timelines is because while the God of War Norse mythology isn't 100% accurate to Norse story outside of the game, in the game there are shrines that depict a normal Ragnarok prophecy, one without our Spartan. Nowhere in the predictions of the future does it mention that Baldur dies at the hands of Kratos, and he is a very important person in Ragnarok. In the predictions for Norse mythology, Baldur dies in Ragnarok, so clearly something is different here. It's only when we go to Jotunheim do we see a different prediction of events. Now that topic goes a little bit far off of the path of this video, so it's going to be put in a separate video that will be going up in about a day or two, so be sure to check out that. But for now, let's go back to the giants and discuss what happened to them in Jotunheim. All right, so you might be asking, how are there two timelines though? How is that even possible? Well, I believe these two timelines are a result of time moving at different rates in each of the realms. In God of War 2018, Mimir tries to explain to us while we are in Helheim, saying that time moves more slowly in Helheim and even more so in the spirit world. When we killed the Reavers near my home, they came here. How did they return so quickly? Time doesn't move the same between all realms, especially where the spirit world is concerned. Like the light of Alfheim? The opposite, in fact. The Lake of Souls feels faster than Alfheim time, but hell is much slower than Midgard. Sorry, I'm sure that's confusing. If we will be back to my son all the sooner, that is good. Ah, aren't you a quick study? That time difference is what gives Kratos plenty of time to go to hell, fight the ice troll at the Bridge of the Damned, all before Atreus gets any worse, barely any time has passed for him. We also learn that the few minutes that we spent in Jotunheim at the end of the game at the peak of the Nine Realms was a much, much longer time for the people in Midgard. Before we return to Midgard, I should warn you, more time has passed than you likely realize. The snowfall that began when you slew Baldur, it's become something else. The stuff of omens. Omens for the coming of winter. Not just any winter, but a great winter to span three summers. And when it's done, Ragnarok begins. In the time of our short trip, Fimble Winter has arrived in Midgard and the world has changed drastically. What this time progression means is that people who go to Helheim can spend hours, days and weeks and only have a few minutes pass in Midgard. And those who travel to Jotunheim can spend a few minutes there and have hours, days and weeks pass in Midgard. Does that make sense to everyone? Just keep that in mind for a moment and we'll come back to that point. Let's talk about the giants for a moment. So on the mural on the wall in Jotunheim, it shows the story of La Alfie the Just, aka Kratos' wife, Atreus' mother Faye, leading the last remaining giants into Jotunheim for safety to escape the genocidal rampage of Thor and the other Aesir gods. An act to protect the race of giants from being wiped out, and after that was done, Tyr helped the giants by destroying every Jotunheim travel tower in all of the other realms, and hid the last remaining tower from Midgard in the realm between realms. So, how did all the giants end up dead in Jotunheim if Faye and 
volunteer destroyed all of the Jotunheim travel towers and hid the last one. And also, if the prophecy state that all the giants are supposed to die in the Battle of Ragnarok, also killing Thor and Odin, what killed them already? How did somebody even get to them to kill them? Well, one clue is in the way their bodies are presented at the end of the game. If you look closely at the bodies while we are spreading phase ashes, you can see the giants are holding weapons of sorts and their blood is spilt all over the mountains. It is my big theory that these giants here are actually from the Battle of Ragnarok in the future from the first timeline without Kratos. From the future cast back in time by the world tree at the same time Jormungandr was during the battle between Thor in Ragnarok. Think about it for a second. When the world serpent and Thor fight in the battle, it was said to be so violent that it sends Jormungandr, and only Jormungandr, back in time. Not Thor, who is standing right next to him in the battle, just Jormungandr. Instead of sending Jormungandr, the world tree sends all of the giants back in time to the 2018 game timeline. This is my theory. This is a part of my theory anyway. My theory is that the vibrations were so intense that it not only sent the world serpent back in time, but all of the giants back in time with the world serpent because he is a giant by species also. It took all of the dead and the dying from the Battle of Ragnarok and dropped them into this timeline with Kratos. That's why the bodies look like they just came from a battle. That's why their blood is spilt all over the mountains and that's how they got there. I know, it's a little crazy, I know. Now, you're probably asking, well, Eddie, that might explain how those bodies got there. But what about the giants that came into Jotunheim for safety in this timeline? That doesn't explain how they died or where they are. Here is the part that's going to blow your minds. The ones that got sent back in time from Ragnarok are the ones that came to Jotunheim to escape. I know it sounds crazy, but please follow me here. <laughs> In the beginning, Laufey the Just takes steps to prevent the giant race from being extinguished. They are all taken to Jotunheim and all of the entrances are sealed or hidden. Those giants are sent to Jotunheim, a place where a few minutes means days or weeks in Midgard and in other realms. So here we go. It is my theory that in the first timeline, the giants come to Jotunheim. They lock themselves in Jotunheim for a couple of hours, which of course is years in Midgard, until the moment Ragnarok happens as originally prophesied, where all of the giants are killed all but Jormungandr. Jormungandr gets in a fight with Thor, one so violent that it sends him and all of the Jotnar back in time, to the timeline where Kratos is arriving in Midgard. The giants all land in Jotunheim, dead all over the mountains, and the reason why the bodies don't look decomposed, and the blood still looks fresh, is because if they arrive the same time as the world serpent in Midgard, time moves significantly significantly slower in Jotunheim compared to Midgard. In Jotunheim, those bodies may have only been there for a day or two in comparison to the years since the World Serpent has been in Midgard in our timeline with Kratos. That's who they are. Those giants escaped Jotunheim, waited for Ragnarok, went to battle, died, were brought to this timeline with Kratos, with the World Serpent, and those giants that are laying on the mountains at the end of the game are those giants that first escaped. Those are the giants and that's the reason why they are dead in our game okay i'm gonna ask you guys to be honest with me in the comment section how crazy does that sound <laughs> if i'm right here eric williams and cory borlog have pulled off one of the most amazing and neat time loops ever to have been created and really hats off to them. Now there is one more part to this theory, a part that's something really big, so big in fact that it warrants its own video. So if you're watching this a couple of days after I post this video, you can click the card at the end of the video to watch that one. But if you're watching this on the day that I've posted this video, then subscribe to the channel so you can get that video as soon as I post up because it's really cool. I'm, I'm, I might be overselling it. I might be really excited here, but I really, really enjoyed thinking it up and Hopefully it's something incredible that you enjoy too. Anyway guys, like always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, comment down below with any criticisms of my theories that you have, any questions you might have, and if you have a much better theory, feel free to drop those too. I enjoy talking with you guys. All right, see you guys all in the next one.